Hello everybody, it's Quinn again, and in this video I'm gonna show you some of the advanced functions that the circuit rhythm has that you can really fine tune your songs with. So let's get started. Okay, so we have the same pattern that we had in the last video. I'm just gonna show you um, a bunch of other functions that the circuit rhythm has. So, we have our sample menu here. But if you hold the shift button, and this is true for pretty much every button on here, it'll go to the bottom uh, text that's here. So if you hold shift and then hit sample, we go to the sample mode menu. And here we have some extra options. So down here is um, the sample mode type. So right now the sample is set to one shot, but we also have gated and loop. You can also set it to reverse. Um, so it'll play the sample in reverse. And choke, meaning if you have two tracks and they both have choke on, then one will stop the other from playing. Um, I can show you the sample modes real quick. So one shot is the classic, you press it once, and it plays the whole sample. But if I uh, change it to gated, for example, the note, the sample will stop when I let go of the pad. And then the last uh, setting here, loop, the sample will loop when it gets to the end. Just like that. You can also set it to reverse. which is fun as well. So let's set this back. I'm actually gonna pull up another sample on a new track. So let's get... Yeah, this, this will work. So I'm gonna go to sample mode here, and I didn't talk about this yet. So right now, all the samples I've been showing you have been in keyboard mode, but I'm going to set it to slice mode. And then there's these three buttons that uh, show up here. This determines how many slices you'll have and how long they'll be. For now, for now, let's do the one on the left, which is the least amount of slices. So now if I go to note, you'll see we only have four pads here. These are all blank, they don't do anything. So if I hit one of these pads now, It's just a portion of the sample. It's a slice of the sample. And the way it's usually laid out, I'm actually gonna go to, let's go to this one that has the most slices now. Um, one starts when the last one ends. And so you can kind of play back samples like that, but you can also use this to make like your own drum kits basically. So you can do something like And if you want to adjust any slice, you can do that. So for example, this has a bass drum at the end, which I don't really like. If I select this slice, then use the length knob here. That's better. And that only affects this one slice, so all my other slices are still preserved. There you go. And that's basically an intro to slice, and you can still change the tuning and everything. Um, but yeah, slicing is very powerful. It's used a lot in like hip hop style beats. Okay, now let's actually, you know, let's record this. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, we'll mute these for now. So recording track three, and let's just uh, start recording. No, oh, I don't, I, maybe I should keep the drums on so I can know what the tempo is. Okay, now let's mute this other drum track, it's getting messy.
So right now all the notes are quantized, meaning they're exactly on each step. They're on the exact 16th note right where it should land. And that's okay, but sometimes you want to record stuff unquantized. So if you want to do that, you hold shift and you can see how our record button is blue right now. That means that record quantize is on. So if we hit it, it'll go dim red. And now if we live record the sample, it should be unquantized. And here, especially on this last step here, it's not on the beat. So if you want to add like some more feeling to your patterns, uh, that's one way you can do it is have your recordings be unquantized. So now, let's go back to this here. Let's go. Um, so we have velocity in this as well. So each note is recorded with a velocity, which changes the sound. So you can change the velocity of each step just by holding the step and then changing the velocity down here. The less lights you see, the uh, less loud it is. Pretty self-explanatory. If you don't want to mess with velocity, like you just want everything to be the same, you can do shift and then hit velocity. Now it'll be fixed velocity. So whenever you play a note, it doesn't matter how hard or soft you hit it, it'll always be the same velocity. We also have the gate menu here. So if our sample is in gated mode, then we can change how long each step holds for. So right now they're very short, which is not what we want. So let's change it like this. So now this uh, step that is sequenced will hold for four steps. Then we can change it for each of them. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, we also have the micro step menu. We'll use these hi-hats for this. So the micro step menu, let's say you want to record something that's faster than uh, the step sequencer allows. So let's say you want to do like a hi-hat roll. Right, it's not very fast, just like this. We well, can do shift, gate, and now you're in the micro step menu. And now, when you select a step on the sequence, you have these six extra micro steps that you can add. So for example, we have the first one and then the middle one on this step. Right, and we can do like even faster and we can do it on all the steps. to get some nice rolls in there. That's one use for micro steps. You can also do like triplet timing by using micro, micro steps. The last menu on the side here that we have is pattern settings. And this one is a little funky, but basically, and let's get a uh, regular drum pattern going here again. That works. I say, okay, so pattern settings. Here, if we press the pattern itself, we can change the length of the pattern. So now it will end on this step and then loop. And you can do it really short or however you want. You can kind of 
mess around with the patterns here and it's fun to play around with. These orange pads here are playback speed of the pattern. So you can change how quickly it scrubs through the sequence here. And the last thing is if you go shift pattern settings, now we're in the probability menu. So now we can set how likely each step is to trigger. So let's say this bass drum here, you can see how it has all the lights lit up here. I'm gonna set it to half. So now if I play this back, you should only hear this bass drum half of the time. Just like that. And it's random. So you can kind of have beats and sounds that are changing a little bit every time. And then the, the last thing I'm going to show you is the grid effects menu here. So this is fun to play with. Uh, let's set the probability of this uh, back to 100. So we have grid effects, or we have the mixer here. And if you go shift mixer, you still have the mutes up here. But now we have all these different colored pads. And these are kind of like live effects that are meant for performance that are kind of fun to mess around with. So these are like um, beat repeats kind of, so. We also have like reverse and unison, just mess around with them really. Um, just kind of get a feel for what each one does. And that's all I have to show you. This thing can do even more stuff. Um, it's just, it can do so many things that like, if you want to know everything, you should uh, dig into the manual yourself and see what else it can do. But uh, that's it for me. So see you next time.